Actually, Eddie, can you tell us exactly? Do you want to get in your box? Well, okay, everybody. Surprise, surprise. Welcome to So Time Club. This is Eddie, and as you can see, I'm starting out So Time Club with a quick update. As you can see, this is a photograph of Precious Ruby, my granddaughter, holding her brother, August. So what possible update could we have on Ruby and August? Well, as of three days ago, check out what August can do. I hope you all can see this. But this is him. Walking. Yes, we've determined We've determined that Ruby is a great teacher. Now, I have just heard that there's an echo. So we're going to quickly see if we've got the sound turned off. That should have improved and eliminated the echo, what I just did. So, without further ado, We're now going to enter. Okay, here we go. So we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and and enter into this. We have a new mic. Hi, it's Eddie, and um, we're we're testing out a new mic right now, and hopefully it's going to work well so that. Uh, you all can hear. Um, it may not sound exactly like the other one sounded, but uh, what we're hoping for is that you can adjust your volume um, so that it works really well for, for you. So anyway, got some announcements today. Welcome to Sew Time Club. Um, as you can see, this is the Sew Time Club announcement that um, uh, we mailed out to all of you. Um, this so time club um, announcement, um, uh, Jonathan, please don't touch a thing, okay? I'll, I'll, right after the announcement, I'll, I'll go listen to it. Um, anyway, this is the uh, so time club announcement that we sent out to you. Um, and what we're hoping is that this is going to help people um, to not only get on, but know how to get on. It's very simple. You just go to, it's across so back dot com go to the so time tab and then from there um you just click on upcoming events and then of course you click on the so time event and then here you are voila it's just that easy so that is my first announcement um also thank you for letting me show you the grandkids and, and what they're doing i think that's pretty fantastic um we've got a few announcements to make first of all um, we seem to be moving out of the COVID thing, which is we're really excited about. We've got more and more people coming into the store, which is exciting. Um, we are currently through this weekend for sure wearing masks in the store, but we're anticipating um, no mask requirements next week. Um, so it should help us get back to normal quicker. And, and um, we're very excited about that. And we miss all of you. So our first announcement is simply this. Our first announcement is that in August, we have so time on August 26th at 10 a.m., but we also have it at 6.30 p.m. That's right. We're going to do two live sessions. So time club, there'll be a sign-up sheet. We'll only be able to take 20 live people. You have to be live um, at 10 a.m. And then at 6.30 p.m. 
in the evening. We'll take 20 more. They'll be, you'll all be spaced out and that you can actually do something like we used to. Now, don't worry, for those of you who want to view the presentation um, virtually, it will still be aired virtually. Um, so that's our so time club um, for August. And what it's going to be is the topic, what the flip is that foot for? What is Debbie doing? Well, Debbie has written these notes. All right, guys, let's learn what all these wonderful extra specialty feet are for. We have so many great feet that help us to do pin tucks, ribbon, cording, hemming, and binding, even sewing in the round. We also have a new hammer set from Baby Long, new walking feet from Brother. There are so many fun things we can do with specialty feet. I can't wait to show you. Also, we are bringing in two new quill books, some new embroidery designs, tote bag designs, and of course, some new and fun notions. I cannot wait to show you all the fun stuff. So get ready for a day of fun and decorating your machine. This is going to be great and it's going to be in August. So other thing, on our website, you can always check the events tab. We have OESD stitching parties. We have Kimberbell events. We even have a brand new quilting event coming up in October from Dime, um, which is going to be super exciting. Last announcement, I want to encourage all of you to send your photos of the projects you've been doing to issaquahsoback at gmail.com. Um, you can look at the bottom of the um, uh, sew time page and you'll see um, some projects that people have been doing. We are working on a label so that we have their names and the date they were submitted. So anyway, um, now progressing forward, we are going to have a drawing today. In order for you to be registered for the, the drawing, all you have to do is comment on the chat line. So there's a chat feature, and if you just say hello, your name will be recorded. And then could be the winner of seven possible giveaways. So the seven giveaways that we're doing are, that's right, a Moda scrap bag. That's right, the ever popular blunt tip high scissors. Another Moda scrap bag. The best nail clippers in the world. Trust me, and they're super sharp. This is Blanks from Kimberbell. Another scrap bag. And finally, a surprise item that we're going to share more about. Someone is going to win this great fabric. Um, it's a Shibori dye fabric. And so Carrie's going to talk about that today. So I'm not going to do any more of your time. I'm going to go try to improve on the audio a little bit. And Carrie's going to start the presentation. And everybody, stay cool. It's going to get hot this weekend. And we have great air conditioning here in the store. So you're always welcome. Hey, bye bye. Well, thank you, Debbie, for the introduction. I am so excited about Sashiko. Um, I've always been fascinated with the artwork that comes from Japan and the fabrics. People who know me know that I love to buy fabric. I don't always like to cut it because it's so pretty. I don't know, maybe there's a few of you out there, but I just think it is gorgeous. Um, a few years ago, Baby Lock introduced their Sashiko machine. Now, Sashiko traditionally is hand stitching. In Japanese, it translates roughly to little stabs, so it's referring to the stitches in the fabrics. Um, I'm not into hand stitching, so when, Sa when Baby Lock introduced their Sashiko machine, I thought, eh, well, maybe whatever. 
And then, of course, I heard the history of the machine. And, and briefly, um, an engineer at Baby Lock, his father came to him um, and said, your mom is getting older. She loves to do sasha for hand stitching, but she's developing arthritis. You need to invent a machine that will do these stitches for her. And so I'm not sure the amount of time it took, but he did that because he loved his mom and he wanted to make sure that she could continue doing the quilting and the stitching that she loved. So of course that broke my heart. So I just had to get a machine. And um, you know, it sat there for a little while, but then I started using it more and more. So we're gonna look at that machine a little bit later in our presentation. But um, let's just kind of back up a little bit to the history of sashiko in general. So sashiko is, is a technique that's a good 400 years old. Um, it started in Japan mostly because it was necessary. Make their fabric, they need to stay warm, and they needed to patch their fabric because they're very poor. And so they developed this technique of putting the patches on. The other interesting thing is that um, they did very loose stitching. And at first you're thinking, well, maybe it's because they're not as skilled. Well, that wasn't really it. What they learned was that it creates insulation, having those pockets of air. Um, the, they were poor enough in 400 years ago that the clothes were actually passed down from one generation to another. So as time goes on, more layers of patches, more warmth, um, but they also became a form of artwork. Um, one of the things that was, that was told to us at the baby lot when we introduced the machine is that when the women are stitching every stitch, they're praying for the person who's wearing it. So if he was a fisherman, they're praying for safety and, and for um, good fishing. If they were um, a farmer, same thing. Um, the cloth that they made, uh, the, the garments out of, usually they had to create themselves from something that they grew. So uh, common in the area was hemp. So they would have to hand weave it and put it together. And then there was some weird rule that I read somewhere on the internet on the history that they were not allowed to have bright colors. And so, because that was reserved for the royalty and the upper class. And so they would dye their fabric with another plant called indigo, which that's where the dark blue comes from. But they also found that the indigo plant and the dye would give off an odor that seemed to repel the insects and the snakes. And I don't know if you're like me, but I don't like snakes or bugs. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll do anything to let make them go away. And if all I got to do is put some indigo dye on my fabric so that they don't like the smell, that's okay with me. So. Um, and then the threads, they just didn't, in those days, they really didn't dye the thread. So you get the look of the dark indigo fabric and the white thread, and that was very, very common then. Over time, they didn't want it just to be utilitarian. So what they did is they started creating designs. Um, the other interesting fact that, that I read about was that a lot of the designs um, being, you know, crisscross and, and jagged looking, um, that was so that the evil spirits could not get through. And so I thought that that was very interesting as well. Um, I won't talk a lot about it, but I will say that shibori is the art of stitching the fabric and then they dye it. So the stitches are what prevents the dye. Think of tie dyeing from the 60s. You know, how many of us are old enough to remember that? Um, the 
pack that uh, we're giving away is pre-printed um, fabric. So it isn't truly dyed, but it's imitating the shibori dyed fabric. It's a new concept in, the, in fat quarters where they print one panel that has actually eight different prints on it. And then you cut them apart yourself and they printed them very generous. So it's a hair over the size of a fat quarter. But um, we just discovered it at the last minute and thought, wouldn't this make a nice giveaway for somebody who just wants just a little bit of that, that coloring of the fabric. So later on, you're gonna see it, it's a backdrop, but, but we're gonna get to that. So the other thing I'm gonna say just ahead of time is I, I did grab some, or create myself some notes because if you know me, you know that I can talk forever and we really only have about an hour. So I'm just gonna every once in a while let you out my notes, so just forgive me for that, but I wanna stay on track. And there's a lot that I am excited to show you, so I just don't wanna forget anything either. So that being said, we're gonna talk about our the first book that I came across and it is written by the Shiva guy, and it's called Boro and Sashiko. And I'm going to lay it right here. And if you're familiar with the Shiva guys, they do all kinds of um, working with cloth and knitting and everything. And you can find them on the internet. But I love their book because it had a lot of projects in it. Uh, you will note that most of what I'm showing you is going to teach you how to do um, sashiko by hand. And I'm going to sh show you really how to do it by machine because again, I don't like to do it by hand. So the Boron Sashiko book is called Har Harmonious Imperfections and it had a lot of projects in it. One of the projects was um, I actually incorporated using a pre-printed panel that I stitched using the Baby Lock Sashiko machine. And so we're gonna show you that up here. It is, um, we made it into a kimono and it is on the wall behind the, the machine here. And so we're gonna pan over that, that in just a second. But the panel is called Waterfall. And I thought, you know, how many, you know, how, how much wall space do we all have for another wall hanging, but here we're able to incorporate the kimono and the wall hanging, so we achieve two projects in one. So you can see the wall hanging, and then I'm going to show you um, in a second how that is packaged. And we have that for sale today, and I won't go over pricing here because it is all online. So definitely when we're finished, go to the website and go to the Sotai presentation. You'll see all the products that we talk about today and the sale pricing. So, um, so we do have the wall hanging pattern. And I'm not sure if there's a glare on it, but I'll just hold it up a little bit. Um, and we do have another pattern that we don't have a sample of but it is also a multi-cloth pattern. What's nice about these is you get to try some of the different um, techniques of Sachiko with, um, and just try a little bit. So they're like smaller projects. So we don't have to do a lot of big projects, okay? So um, the next thing that I wanted to show is Oh, I wanted to talk about on the wall hanging some of the threads that we used. So I used some Kingstar metallic thread on the waterfall because I wanted to see what it would do in the Sashiko machine. Because the Sashiko machine, um, when we get to it, I'm going to show you, it's unique. It only uses one thread in the bottom. It does not use a top thread. And many people will look at the machine and say, yeah, but I see a place for top thread. Less simply so you can fill your bottom. So I wanted to see how it would do with the, with the metallic thread. And it, I felt it did fine, but I just used it on what I call the waterfall. So the straight lines coming down um, is the metallic thread. And then I went and I was using the confetti 
spread, but it is just a standard of 50 weight, 100% cotton, and it just went through that machine like butter. The, the sash comb machine loved this thread. You're going to see on my next um, project that I did out of the book, it's the shawl. And not only did I use confetti thread, but I also used the tootie. It's basically the same thread by Wonderfill, but as you can see, it's variegated, okay? So it's really, really, really pretty. I love color. And if you know me, you're gonna say, why aren't you wearing purple today? Well, I didn't have as gorgeous of a purple shirt for today, but you're gonna notice my shawl over here on the mannequin is purple. And I incorporated some patches in it and then some stitching. And so we'll pan over to that in just a moment. Um, but I just had a lot of fun. I wanted to do more free form. And so I was very excited about that. So anyway, the shawl is again in that book and it was really pretty easy to make because it's just a giant rectangle. And then we put armholes in it after the fact. So, um, so yeah, when you get a minute, when we get a minute, we're going to pan over to that and show that to you. The shawl. So it's coming any minute. <laughs> so anyway, um, here it comes. So right here, we've got the patches. You can see the stitching. I use different colors. So some of the stitching doesn't show because I didn't want it to show. And then some of it is definitely more pronounced. So it was a lot of fun to make that shawl. And it's something I actually made it reversible. So the inside, you're just going to see stitching. I'm not going to take it off to show it to you. You can just see the stitching on this. Um, so anyway, the next thing that I do want to talk about is pre-printed patterns. So I showed you the waterfall. I showed you the... Um, the, the panel that I didn't quite get done, but we also have a package of pre-printed coasters. Now, you're gonna look at these and say, well, I don't see any printing. No, you don't see printing. Why? Because it washes out when you're done, which is great, okay? So what's nice about these, these were done on a Destiny. Now, with that being said, it's called a hand look stitch. And that stitch has been available for probably 20, 30 years, maybe. We just didn't realize what it was. And so your Janome has it, your Berninas have it, pretty much every brand of machine that's a sewing slash quilting machine has it. Um, so we, we did this one on the Destiny, but I also have a sample here of what it could look like on some of the other machines and i would recommend if you're doing this that you try your different your stitches with different machines different threads and what i what if you can see i used one of our marking pins and i wrote what machine i used what tension i used what thread i was using one of the secrets to doing this is the threads so i'm going to grab a couple more threads and show you so again, what I did on the fabric is in the, my top thread, I used Invisifil. Now Invisifil, if you haven't seen it, this is the Invisifil thread. It is so fine, it just sinks right into the fibers and you just don't see them. But then in the bobbin, I used the confetti thread, the 50 weight. I didn't have to, I thought about a 12 weight and I found that 12 weight was just too heavy and that I didn't need it. And so what I did is I used the confetti standard 50 weight in the bobbin. And then by tightening your tension, it pulls up that bobbin thread to the top. So this is the top of the fabric and you can see that it looks like a stitch and a space. And that's what Sashiko really is, is a stitch and a space. Um, but as you know, sewing machines always make stitches every time. So having a machine 
uh, you know, on our regular machine, we're, we're faking it by putting this Invisifil on the top to sink into the thread so you don't see that space stitch, okay? Now, Sashiko, or I mean, Solaris and the Luminaire, what they did is they actually created a stitch in the sewing portion of the machine that does it for you. So we slide across the top to our specialty stitches. And right here, they have an H and they stand for hand look. And what that simply is, there's three different choices. And the only difference is going to be the length of the stitch that you see. So you just are going to choose the one you want. You're going to put your Invisifil in top, on the top. You're going to put your confetti thread on the bottom. And then what you're going to do is just stitch and you're going to follow your pattern line and it's going to come out beautifully. I recommend using your needle down position. So you, when you turn corners, they come out perfect. Um, but it's just so easy on your pre-printed fabrics to do it that way. Okay. Now, another thing that I did on the Sashiko, and since we've got it on the screen, I'm going to show you this first. And that is, we went to IQ Designer because I downloaded, and I'm going to look at, show you this really quick on here. I downloaded clip art. And I love how easy it is to just download the clip art and turn it into something. So I downloaded it. And then I scanned it in and I turned it into stitches. And it was not hard. It would be something that you could come into the store and we would love to show you how to do it. But it just starts from a standard picture here on the screen. And once I'm completed, I've turned it into these stitches. And it was just that easy. And I didn't do anything special. I just used a standard embroidery thread. Um, I could have used a, a cotton thread, but I just chose on this one to use normal thread. So we went from picture, scanned it, straight to the embroidery. How easy was that? Well, you come in, we'll show you how easy it was because it was just that amazing, okay? So another thing that I do want to show you, and I think we have a video on it, is another way that we created on the, the, the um, Sashiko, which this technique actually has been available for several years. I mean, when I first started 20 years ago, it was on the top of the line machines back then. So on the video, you're going to simply choose a design. So I choose chose one of these designs and in a minute I'll tell you where it comes from. And then what I did is I went to my edit screen and I'm looking for this icon right here. Um, it has like nine little boxes and when I touch it, it's going to let me add or repeat. So I can repeat up and down. If I choose the next icon, I can repeat to the side and, and you're just going to fill your screen with it. Once I've got it how I want it, and I've located it on my fabric, the last step that I have learned is I have this monochrome icon, and if I touch it, it's going to stitch without stopping. Because remember, on the machines, each item that you add, the machine thinks is something new and it wants to stop. Well, we don't want to stop. We want to go all together. So we have a wall hanging that we'll show you in a few minutes of what that looks like all stitched out and i'm going to talk a little bit more about that wall hanging and where i got some of the other designs for it so oesd um because i like to embroider and sometimes i want these designs but i don't want to work that hard i want to let my machine do it so i was looking around and oesd has Sashiko Reflections. I'm going to show it to you here, but I think you're going to see it better if I put it under there. And so this is a design pack that I used in one of the wall hangings in combination with what I just showed you on the Solaris. And remember, both Brother and Baby Lock have that feature. Um, but I wanted more than just what 
the design pack had. I wanted some of the littler ones. And I had seen on the internet that OESD had two other design packs. And I'm just going to show you my pages here. They had a design pack in the old days called Sashiko One. And it had smaller little designs, OK? And then they also had Sashiko Two. So they had some like four by four, five by five, but they also had the smaller ones. And it's the smaller one that I used to combine. So if you want these design packs, because I went to OESD and I said, well, I'm doing this presentation. How do we get them? They said, not a problem. You have a website that you can go to and we will get this posted. Actually, if you choose Sashiko one or two in our website to, to purchase, it will automatically take you to the website. But if you like to type it in yourself, we have all, all of this here. And you're going to go to the website right here. And you can, what's nice when you go to the website is they broke the design pack down. So have you ever purchased a design pack because you wanted one design? Well, now you can go to the website and buy just one. Or you can buy two or three, or you can get the whole pack. So um, it's just a nice way to get some of their older designs that they've discontinued for stores. So we're going to zoom in so you can write this down. OK. Oops, I need to go this way. And this this way. Nope. I'm getting my lefts and rights mixed up, folks, but we'll get there. How is that? OK, so it, it is kind of a long address so I want to make sure you've got time to write it down um, but again you can also get there by clicking from our website on the Sashiko 1 or Sashiko 2 design packs and that's a lot easier than typing all this yes and you won't mistype and go someplace you don't want to which is not good okay everybody got that let's move on I am just so excited so the other thing that I wanted to show you is let's look at our wall hangings. So if we can, we're going to give us just a minute. We're going to move our camera a little bit so you can see our wall hangings. So the, the first wall hanging is simply what I got from those embroidery design packs. OK, so this is where I created that in. I started with one square and I added them and stitched them out. These were all pre-created in the Sashiko 2, Sashiko 1, Sashiko Reflections design packs. OK, so um, easy to stitch. You just put your fabric in, stitch them out. It was great. I really loved it. Now, the next wall hanging I want to show you comes from another one of our books, and that is simple sashiko so i'm going to move some of these items out of our way and put that down here so simple sashiko is written by susan briscoe and again she's done a lot of books and things for our, um, sashiko for years and what is nice is that um, again it's done by hand and we're going to show you this wall hanging from this book in just a sec. OK. Um, because it's done by hand, and I think she really is in Japan a lot more than the US. So I found that her instructions were kind of a mirror image of what I what I was understanding, because her lefts and her rights and her tops and her bottoms and the instructions were pretty much opposite. But I'm going to share with you a couple of tips and tricks that I learned. So I was trying to figure out how in the world am I going to get these patterns on that linen? Because we have some great marking tools, but they nothing seemed to work well on linen. And they called for linen. So what I finally figured out, and I'm just going to cut to the chase here, is that I actually traced the pattern out of the book onto water soluble stabilizer. I didn't use the film. I used the kind that feels like fabric, but it's totally water soluble. 
And then I just used KK2000 and I sprayed it down to stick it. And then I stitched and followed that pattern. And it's like, oh my gosh, this was so easy. I've got to share how easy it is to get that pattern onto your design block. Now, the other thing I'm going to share is the original pattern from the book it tells you to put the whole wall hanging together first and then decorate it with stitches. Well, if you're going to do it by machine, I'm going to suggest that you create each of your blocks individually and then put them together because it's really easier to manipulate and move your blocks through a machine when they're smaller rather than when they're a full wall hanging, okay? So it's just a suggestion, but again, we all do these projects, so we figure out the easier way to do them, okay? Now, jumping back to the Sashiko Reflections Design Pack, I do wanna have us focus the camera in on a couple of wall hangings or that I, I framed artwork. And this one, I'm going to put this down so you can see. So these are created in full, and you're going to see them just a second here, from Sashiko Reflections. And then I got them framed. And I wasn't sure really what I wanted to do with them. I just knew that they were so beautiful and I had to do something. And I accidentally walked into Michael's and found these frames on clearance because they had made them wrong for somebody else. So that was a deal. So keep your eyes peeled for deals because you just can't pass them up. So these two were complete. And then the, the next one that we're gonna look at, when I created that, we're gonna go up and it's almost there. So on that one, you can see that I grabbed a little design and I made one straight long row down the left. And then I put together three other designs to, to come down the right side of it. Um, so definitely feel free to put things together because you can make it yours that way. And so I just loved doing that. And that was just a ton of fun. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the marking tools that we have. And let me grab those really quick. Oops, dropped one, but I'll grab it. Well, while I'm grabbing those, I'm going to show you this is another tote bag that we made out of Susan's book. And so again, we did the panel first, then we created the tote, okay? So now I'm going to show you marking. All right, so I'm going to move these out of our way and I want you to see some of what we did. And where did my other panel go? Well, that's all right. We'll do it here. So on here, in the beginning, we used to only have chalk. And so we would just put it down and we would follow it along. And this is, I think they call pompous grass. It's one of the designs. But now we have, I love this book by Sylvia Pippen. She's also very good at creating all kinds of patterns. And she suggests that with the patterns, you just put them in your copy machine, you blow them up to the size you want them, and then you can trace them onto your fabrics. And again, I would consider you can trace straight to your fabrics, but sometimes here's some more designs that she has. So this was a really great little book and I like things I can put in my purse when I'm going to go shopping because I want to see, but I don't want to haul big books with me. Well, then I'm like, well, is tracing so much fun? Not always. So she created some of some stencils. Now, it's not going to be every design out there because there's so many of them. But these stencils, you can just lay right out and then you can keep following them when you draw them down. Well, my first favorite drawing item was the Roxanne's chalk pencils. And I loved those and I especially loved them using her sharpener because I would get that sharp tip. But Sylvia Pippin's um, templates were so thin, I couldn't get the pencil in. So I said, well, there's gotta be something that we use because she used them. And I've discovered this Clover white marking pen. 
and it makes a very fine line and it stays until you iron it out. So Roxanne's pins are washable, um, but the other one, you iron it away. And that was really, really nice for drawing the pattern lines. And so I was able to get nice, crisp pattern lines. So those are the different marking tools that I used when I was creating designs, okay? Um, now, another thing when we're talking about doing some of the em embroidery, okay, is I also found this adorable, I'm going to move these out of our way here. I found this adorable pagoda. And I'm not sure if it's going to look better under this camera or the other, but I'll get out of the way. And this pagoda I found from OESD. And what was fun about that was how easy it was to put it together. And we have it in the store because I thought, oh, we'll just make it for a display. But then as some of our ladies were seeing what I was doing as I was preparing, they're going, I want that. So I thought, well, I guess if I'm, I'm not the only one who likes this. So OESD does beautiful freestanding lace, freestanding projects. And I had a lot of fun with this one, okay? Now there are a few tricks after you stitch it out and that is how do you put it together? So first of all, during stitching, because, and I'm gonna take these out of the package so we don't get the glare. Because we do have a little bit of what I call applique where we need to trim the fabric away, I really loved these Quilter Select Wave applique scissors because of how sharp of a tip they get that right down here to the end. And I can really get close up without accidentally trimming away something that I don't want trimmed. But to put the pagoda together, OESD has created what they call button clips and alligator clamps. And I'm just going to go ahead and take them out as well. So here's your button clips and then your alligator clamp. So the alligator clamp, if you can see this, he just has a little alligator mouth here. And, ah. and you're going to grab your little button because you got to pull it through. There's a little hole. So it's, it's a button and a hole. Once you get it in there, that's where you're going to use your alligator clip. And you're going, well, it's already in. I know. But when you're muscling this around, he may fall back out when you're working on one of the other ones. And so you leave your clip on till you get all the way around the pagoda. Then you move up a level. So those were some things that, again, we always say, oh, we don't need that until you use it. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, I wish I'd had that a while back. So I really, really loved how helpful those were. So now there are there's another book that I'm going to show you and I'm going to give you some more ideas. So I'm going to move our pagoda out of the way. We have these pagoda patterns and all of the, the supplies that you need are in the store. So feel free to come on in and pick those up or order them online. Remember that anytime you spend more than $100, we, can, we have the option of shipping it to you for free. So you just need to let us know. So this book has all kinds of projects. So I did use it for inspiration. I did not get all of the projects done that I started with, but you can see that there's pillows in here. There was patterns. This is one of the patterns that I traced off, actually both of these that I traced, and then I put them in the wall hanging. And so I just wanted you to see that, you know, I, I like to mix and match between my books and my projects, and I had a lot of fun. These two pillows came from, pre-printed fabric, but the inspiration of doing the pillows came from the book. Um, I forgot that I had these pillows. And so Eve, I had intended on doing one of the pillows in the book, but since I had the pillows and I was running short of time, I kind of cheated and I got these pillows done um, and put together as a pillow. So 
Definitely, there are 20 different projects and a lot of fun projects in here that, again, I just didn't get a chance to get them all done, but I did use the patterns out of the book in the meantime. Um, can't see that. Okay, let's try this. So this is just, this is their version of coasters, a lot larger than the coasters that I made. Okay, but, it, but just tons of fun. I thought that this would be fun project, a shawl. Um, but again, we will probably, and this is like a wall hanging. They actually call it, a, I call it a doorway because it splits from right about here down and then you put it across a doorway. And so it kind of gives you privacy. So again, from the culture of the old days, but um, now we can use it in a modern way. Now, just like on the Sashiko machine, the Janome, which is awesome because of the large screen, it has some quilting stitches that look like hand. And so we just want to cycle through and they're really this, this stitch right here. So do you see where it has like a single line and then it has the multi lines. So the multi lines is where it's pulling that thread up to the top. And that's why they call it a hand look. And I'm not sure if we're going to try and zoom in for you and see if you can see it. Um, I know sometimes trying to see a screen is not is a challenge, but it's just was really easy to do. And of course, it's, I didn't change anything other than the thread and the tension, but I did increase my tension on this machine to a seven and it worked beautifully. So um, I'll move my foot and here we go. So this was one of the stitches that, that I did on my, um, when I was practicing and, and working on this. Now, we know how sewing machines work. They have a top thread and a bobbin thread and they link together to form a stitch. But let's look at the difference of an actual Sashiko machine, just so that you're aware of it. So I'm gonna, oops, not take this machine with me. I'm gonna slide over here. And these are some different items that I have, or stitches that I've done on this machine. So I actually hand pleated the fabric here this, of course, was done by a serger, but I wanted it to be finished. And this just shows you, in contrast, stitch and a true space. There's no stitches on the top here. This is where we can actually weave threads in between those stitches and spaces. And this just kind of is showing us some of the different sizes or lengths because you can adjust your stitch and your space over here. That's the only adjustments you have. There's no reverse, there's nothing else, but you can make it a long stitch in a short space or a long space in a short stitch. You can make them balanced, but I'm just going to go ahead. The other thing that, that I wanted to everybody to understand is this machine does make a different noise than your standard sewing machine. It's okay. It's normal. So here we go. If I go fast, you can really hear that noise, but that is normal of how it works. And if I take it easy, I can actually turn corners. I want to do it smooth because I don't want any wrinkles in it, but you can literally turn corners, do whatever you would like to do to get the shape that you want. Okay. So in doing that, this gives you an idea of how you can actually decorate the fabric. I was turning corners and going around the different petals. As I went down some of these petals, I was actually weaving a thicker thread in with my stitch. So sometimes you don't care what this fab, uh, stitch thread is because you're going to weave a thicker thread and the, the standard thread is just holding it in place. So this was another fun project that I did, but this shows you how you can decorate it. So what is great about Sashiko is there's so many uses. You can use it for on its own as the design, but you can also incorporate it into quilting. I know of quite a few ladies who like to do Hawaiian quilting, which is again, traditionally by hand, 
they have gotten a sashiko machine so that they can do that echo quilting with the sashiko and still have that stitch in the space because some people like in hawaiian quilting it really has to be very pure and hand and you know they have traditions that they have to follow this is the best choice for what i would call faking that tradition um carrie how much is this machine so this machine retails at $39.99, which is amazing for the technology in it. But there is a special going on right now where it is half price. It's amazing at $19.99. We have a limited amount right now because of COVID. We get the shipments when we get them. But I would jump on it if you would ever want it. And I would love to make sure that you are comfortable with the machine because I have been playing with it so long. I'm getting I'm getting those tips and tricks and techniques down really well. And so I'm looking forward to, you know, working with more people on playing with this machine. So let me think if I miss every, anything. So I want us to pan over here on this panel so you can see this is one of the items that we, is going to be in the drawing. But again, this is, these are fat quarters, but they pre-printed them onto, and they call it digitally printing, onto this fabric. And if this technique um, becomes more popular, they're actually finding that this is a great way to do fat quarter collections for people, but it is a way that the manufacturer can kind of save. And we know that if they save money, we save money because they'll pass that savings on to us. So again, you get that look of the shibori, but you don't have to get your hands dirty dyeing fabric, which is something, you know, I won't do. That's like a hand thing. So let's just kind of review. We have the embroidered designs that are available in case you prefer to embroider. We can use a sashiko machine or we can use a hand look on our own machines to really get that stitch in a space look because notice embroidery can't do that. We can combine with our embroidery machines to really get a whole new look on our panels. And then we can make things that we can use. So we have articles of clothing here. We've got our pillows. We've got, oh, I didn't even show you these notebooks. So let me just get these right up here to the camera. I'm getting my lefts and rights mixed up, aren't I? Okay. So again, both of these were created using the design pack or the design technique on the Sashiko or the Solaris, I'm sorry, the Solaris, but using one of the embroidered design packs, I believe it was Sashiko one. And then we just combined these with the border feature and we made the notebook cover um, on the, and then this is one of the um, Kimberbell blanks. So if you got one of these Kimberbell blanks and maybe you weren't totally in love with the design that they sent with it, or maybe you were, but you just, love the blank idea and you just want to do more variety instead of the same thing this is another way to do this and if you're familiar with them uh, kimberbell blanks when it's create or when you're stitching it um, the zipper is installed but it's out flat and then you put it together after you embroider it this notebook cover what is really cool is the shiba guys promoted the notebook cover pattern. I'm the one who created the design using one of the Sashikos from OESB. Sashiko um, uh, one, I believe, is where this was. And then I combined it to fill up the spaces. Um, but the pattern is free on the internet um, for the measurements. And I believe it's at the Clover website. Carrie, can the Bernina 770 do some of this? I know, I think you asked me to Absolutely. bring it in. Absolutely. It also has that hand look stitch and it does a beautiful job. Now here's an advantage to the Bernina. Has anybody seen the size of that bobbin? It's got 70% more thread than any other machine out there. And so I know when I was, even though I did some of these projects with the Sashiko machine, guess what? I was constantly adding 
Bob and th because they were only a class 15 and I was running out of thread all the time. I would think that the machine messed up, but it never did. It was just running out of thread and I had to refill. Yeah. So I love the idea of using the Bernina because of that larger bobbin size. And those who have 770 QEs can get the beautiful embroidery unit simply to attach to their Bernina Absolutely. 770. And we have those in stock. We do have them. And, and if you have one of the smaller Berninas, like the 570 or the 590, they can do the same thing. They, the 590, I believe, comes with the embroidery unit. 570, it's an option, but they have the hand look sewing stitch on the quilting side of the machine, but they also have the ability to use the embroidery designs. So you have so many options out there. You can use what you have as far as machines at home by just you know looking for that hand look stitch or making sure you have the you know an embroidery design or you can just i don't know get a new machine that's what i did this year i got a bernina because well yes it was purple but um but also there was just a lot of features that it had that my other machines didn't have and you shouldn't have just one anyway you need a collection because they all do something special so do we have any question, other questions? It doesn't look like, uh, oh, there's two, there's two embroidery units. There's a small one and there's the large one. And you always want the large one, always. Always. Yeah, and um, the price of that I think is like a thousand bucks. Yeah, or something it's, like it's, that. It's right around there, and if you call the store, we'll we'll give you the actual sale price. Yeah, I think the sale price is nine ninety nine. Karen, you have people requesting. Where did you get your linen? My linen, I actually two places. I if you want to get beautiful linen locally, run down to Gisipium. Um, I went in there, and you know, my passion is embroidery and quilting. So when it came to linen, I was like, I don't know what to do. Where do I get linen? What is this? And Mo said, they got linen at Gisipium. Yeah. And I went down there and at first I asked and they said, oh, it's in that corner. And I still looked lost. And they actually came and took me by the hand and walked me over to it. So those of you who are quilters and don't know what to do with linen, Gisipium will help you. If you aren't finding the color that you want, I did find a website, but I'll have to look that up again. It was an accident that I found it online, but part of their name has to do with linen. So, and they're a big linen fabric company somewhere online. So we can look that up if you need it, just contact us. But I would, I would start locally. I believe in supporting our local stores first. And um, I use online when I can't find it locally. So. So definitely Gisipium would be my first choice. So machines like the Brother Quattro. Brother Quattro. The, the Baby Lock Destiny. The Dream Machine. The Dream the Machine. Luminaire Solaris. Guess what? Do you have one of those really old, uh, Brother called it the ULP series. It had a floppy drive. Yeah. It still has that connect feature that I showed you. They, I think they call it in the book, the border feature back then. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's been around and we just didn't know how cool it was. So you have these things available, definitely upgrade, get the newest machines because they just make your life easier. But I just hope that you fall in love with Sashiko as much as I did. And thank you for joining us today and keep shopping. We're having fun, come visit us in the store. We can't wait to see you again. Thanks Carrie for all your work. I know this took a lot, but I think our customers really love it. Well, I hope so because it was fun and I enjoyed doing it. Okay. I did have help. I'll just say that. I did have helpers, but they don't want to be named, so it's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, take care, everybody, and, uh, and stay we'll out of the heat. And we'll see you in August.